Hello, everyone. My name is Nick Stanford, and today I'm here to talk about another exciting new tool in the Marlowe ecosystem, the TypeScript SDK. The TypeScript SDK will allow you to incorporate Web3 functionality in your dApp with tools that you're already familiar with. At its core, the SDK is a collection of libraries and NPM packages that make developing your dApps easier. But why do we need it? Well, Marlowe is good at creating secure smart contracts and generating on-chain code, but what about your off-chain code? How do you integrate Web3 in your dApp that likely has more standard Web2 components than Web3 features? This is where the TSSDK comes in. It allows you to work in those environments you're already familiar with, like React and TypeScript or JavaScript, and you can build your standard React site, then bring in the TSSDK to generate contracts and interact with your users for that Web3 functionality. It includes things like a wallet package, runtime features, and my personal favorite, the ability to create a smart contract with inputs to a simple function. Let's jump over to VS Code and take a look. We'll start with the standard scaffolding for React with create React app. So I'll say npx create React app. We'll call it TSSDK. Now React is going to install some things to prepare to render our site. And while it does that, let's take a look at what's available in the TSSDK for us to work with. So we see a collection of different packages here that are available to us. I'm not going to demonstrate all of these packages today, but we will take a look at this wallet package as well as runtime lifecycle. So let's jump back over to VS Code and see if it's ready for us. It looks like React is ready for us. So let's CD into the folder we just created. And now we can install those NPM packages from the TypeScript SDK. We can say npm install at marlo.io slash wallet and npm install at marlo.io slash runtime lifecycle. Hit enter, make sure that those start to install. Now we can bring open our app file and start to use these inside of our React application. We'll first import them. I'll say import everything as wallet from at marlo.io slash wallet. And we'll bring in just a single function from this other one. We'll say make runtime lifecycle. And that comes from at marlo.io slash runtime lifecycle slash browser. OK, so the first thing we may want to do is get some information about the wallets our user uh, has installed in their browser. There's a function for that. We can say const installed wallet extensions equals that wallet package dot get installed wallet extensions. Now this will return an array with all of the different uh, browser extensions the user has for Cardano wallets. And the next thing we may wanna do is connect to an active runtime instance. To do that, we need two fields for parameters. One is that wallet name, and the second is a runtime URL. So let's first get the wallet name. We can say const wallet name equals installed wallet extensions at position zero dot name. I know the field is called dot name. If you need to know what's in there, just log it to the console and it should show you the fields that are available. And then we need runtime URL. Now I'm just gonna copy and paste an IOG hosted runtime instance in a production environment, you'll need your own runtime instance. Uh, the easiest way to do that is with Demeter, but for simplicity of this demo, I'll just plug this one in. And now that we have those two parameters, let's actually connect to the runtime. We can say const runtime lifecycle. Equals await make runtime lifecycle. And this is the one function that we brought in uh, from runtime lifecycle here. And now we need to pass in those two parameters. One is wallet name, and we've called it the same. The other is runtime URL, and we've also called that the same. And now we can say console.log connected to runtime. Okay. Now that we're connected to the runtime, we can start to access information from the blockchain. We can get things like the amount of ADA in a user's wallet. So let's try that. We'll say 
const user wallet equals await that wallet package dot make browser wallet. And then we'll pass it in the wallet name. And then we can say something simple like const the amount we want is user wallet dot get lovelesses. And that should just return the amount of ADA in the user's wallet. And then we can log it. We can say something like console.log. This user has amount loveless in their wallet. And that should return just fine. But what about doing something a little bit more exciting? Let's actually create a smart contract and initiate a signing for the user. That's as simple as saying await runtime lifecycle dot contracts dot create contract. And now it'll ask you to put in a couple fields for your smart contract to keep this simple. I'm just gonna say close. So the contract should just open and then close. And then for a little morale boost, we can say console.log contract success. And that's it. Let's save this. And now we can run it just like a normal React application at this point. It should bring up localhost 3000 with our application. I'm just gonna copy this and take it over to a browser where I do have those Cardano wallet extensions. So I'll paste in localhost 3000 here. And we see the wallet UI already pops up, but I'll open my browser console. We'll see we're connected to the runtime and then it displays the amount of Loveless in my wallet. And then it initiates that signing. And this is the creation of that smart contract. So let's say sign, put in our password, hit enter, and we should see contract success. And that's it. We've created a smart contract with just a few lines of code from the TypeScript SDK. Now it's important to note that the SDK is still in beta mode. So some of the names of these functions may change. Just keep an eye out from the IOG team about updates to the TS SDK. Now, these are just some simple demonstrations to show the power of the new TS SDK in simplifying the development of your dApps. In the future, We'll do deeper dives into this SDK and demonstrate some prototypes that you could create with the TS SDK. For now, check out the repository on GitHub linked below this video and work through some of these examples yourself. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.